Good morning, everybody. How are you? It's Miss Maggio. How's everyone today? Are we ready to have an awesome class today? Yay! All right. Today, we're going to get a little bit more into the rainforest and so and talk about money and lots and lots of fun stuff. So let's get started with a little morning movement uh, with our rainforest dance. So everybody get up. Let's move. Good morning, Justin and Lucas. All right. Let's move it. We ready? <laughs> All right, everybody up, on your feet. Let's go, let's go. on the rainforest. Are we ready to learn all about the rainforest today? Now, Ms. Maggio was looking at lots of fun stuff about the rainforest. So let's look at our, our globe again um, and talk about our, let's go, go over our seven continents. Remember, there are seven continents in the world, okay? You have North America, South America, Europe, Africa, Asia, Oceania, or for example, the um, uh, where Australia is, and you have Antarctica. Now, one thing Ms. Maggio found out is that there's two types of rainforest. Now, Ms. Maggio always thought, oh my goodness, it's got to be hot in the rainforest. But there's two different types of rainforest. There's temperate rainforests and there's tropical rainforests. Good morning, Victor. And so with that being said, today we're going to talk about the Amazon. And who can tell me, is the Amazon a temperate rainforest where it's not too hot? Or do we think the Amazon is a tropical rainforest where it's hot? What do you think? You are right if you said it's a tropical rainforest, because it is a tropical rainforest. So let's take a look here. Okay. Miss Maggio's map. That doesn't want to work. Whoops. Oh, my goodness. All right. So here we have a map of our rainforest. It's a little bit small from there, so you can't really see it very well. I tried to find a bigger one, but it wouldn't. So I'll help you out with this. These are our tropical rainforests. So today we're going to be in South America. We're talking about the continent of South America, okay? And we're talking about um, the continent of South America, and we're talking about the Amazon. And that's where this is, the Amazon rainforest. There's also tropical rainforests in Africa, and there's also tropical rainforests over here in the South Pacific. Okay, but today we're going to focus on, we are going to focus on 
the Amazon. So Ms. Majo has something wonderful for everybody today, but let's take a quick look at what someone out there did for their homework, okay? Uh, Diego in Canada did this wonderful, wonderful drawing and uh, investigation research about the Amazon. I don't know if you guys can see it there, but I'm going to read it to you. And then on the back while I'm reading, you get the joy of seeing this lovely picture. The black caiman is a species of large crocodiles or crocodilian. It is one of the biggest crocodiles. He is the largest animal in the Amazon basin, the black caiman. Well, very good. And then on the back, as you can see, he drew us a nice toucan. And he drew us a wonderful, wonderful, some trees. Okay. So with that being said, you can continue to do some homework if you want to. And we're doing the, um, the rainforest all week. So good job, Diego. Love it. Love it. We'll have to look it up. The black caiman. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but I hope so. C-A-I-M-A-N or and largest croc, one of the biggest crocodiles. Cool. All right. Thank you, Diego from Alberta, Canada. Nice. So let us go here. Um, where did it go? And there is a cool website. It's called 360cities.net. And in this website, you can go in and it gives you like a virtual 360 tour of what it would look like to actually be on the ground there. So let's take a look at what it would be like right now to go through the rainforest in the Amazon. It's supposed to spin around in a circle. Oh, I'm supposed to make it spin around in a circle. Look at that. See, it's almost like you're there. Ooh, kind of cool, huh? And you know what? And when you're doing that, you can kind of look at it. Wow, lots of trees. So on this um, here, it has a lot of different kinds of um, wonderful, wonderful, um, uh, wonderful, wonderful uh, different places that you can go and see in a virtual as if you're right there on the ground, right? So with that being said, so there we have it. Now, Let's take a look at some cool vocabulary that we have to learn about. We have a red-eye tree frog. Okay, the red-eye tree frog is an animal. Good morning, Camila. Is an animal in the um, in the Amazon, that's one of our animals. Let me make him bigger so we can see him. The red eye tree frog. Whoops, a little too big. Then we have the toucan. If anybody likes Fruit Loops, Toucan Sam is on the box cover. Then we have the monkey. I bet you there's a lot of you guys that are monkeys out there, aren't there? We have the snake. Lots of different kinds of snakes there. The leopard. Hmm, interesting. The macaw bird, which is the beautiful, beautiful bird that has all of those beautiful uh, colored feathers. And we have, then we have the word rainforest. Rainforest begins with an R and an F, right? And canopy is the big trees, all of the leaves at the top of the trees that have the canopy over the top and that doesn't let any sunlight come in. So that's why a lot of times in the rainforest, even though it's it might be uh, sunny one day, you can't, it doesn't really seem so on the bottom because all of the leaves and the canopies from the trees are covering over the top. And then the forest floor, which is on the bottom, what else we have? A sloth. Oh my goodness. Let's take a bigger 
look, closer look at what a sloth looks like because that is kind of cool. Wow. What do we think about a sloth? Interesting, huh? Kind of cute. Kind of looks part like a monkey, part like a koala bear. And then we have um, the under understory, which is on the ground. So there's some vocabulary for us for our rainforest. But with all of that being said about the rainforest, let's take a walk through the Amazon. What do you think? Should we take a walk through the Amazon so we can see what it looks like? What do you think? All right. I hope you think the same. So here we go. So a nice lady at teachers-teachers.com did this. So we have our words. Who can read these words? Can you guys read these words with me? Canopy, right? Buttress roots. That doesn't, the next one does not sound very good. Where's my stick? The poison dart frog. Ah, uh, poison dart frog. Monkey. Macaw. We just saw those, didn't we? All right, so here's a picture of the nice, beautiful area of the rainforest, right? Yes. And in this nice, beautiful picture, we have... All you can see all of the treetops, all of the canopies that are up above, right? I see a canopy, it looks like broccoli. It kind of does look like broccoli, doesn't it? Can you see it? A little bit like broccoli, huh? Maybe I can zoom in a little bit. Mm -hmm. All right, and then we have. Mazda and Maji are not doing a good job today. We have, look at this. I see a, I see buttress roots, not a buttress roots. I see buttress roots. Okay, buttress roots are these that come out of a tree. Remember the roots of it go into the ground. Roots of a plant are the part that goes into the ground to keep the plant or the tree in the ground, right? So these are the roots of the tree called buttress roots because they look like a type of architecture. Oh, I guess this is the poison dart frog. I guess we don't want that to touch us because if it's poisonous, then it's not going to be a good thing. I see a poison dart frog. It's so tiny and it's so dangerous. <sighs> huh? Oh my goodness, tiny yet dangerous, I wonder. He's touching it, I hope it doesn't do anything bad. Oh, look at the monkey, how cute is the monkey? Cool, huh? I see a monkey, it is hungry. Hmm, what do monkeys eat? Bananas? Probably, <laughs> maybe not, maybe not bananas, maybe leaves. And here's the macaw bird, the macaw bird with all of its beautiful, beautiful, pretty colors. It's got red and yellow and blue. Huh, the macaw, I see a macaw, it is resting. It's important to rest, isn't it? And now what you can do at home if you want to is draw an animal you would see um, in the rainforest. So for those of you out there that would like to do that, you can draw an animal or do another investigation and look to see if you could find something that you think would be in the rainforest. What do you think? All right, cool. So... And there we have it, boys and girls, a little bit more about the rainforest. So let's just remember the rainforest is in South America, the one that we're talking about. And what's the name of the rainforest we're talking about? Good job. It's the Amazon. We're talking about the Amazon rainforest. 
Okay. And so in the Amazon, remember it rains a lot. There's lots of types of rainforest, but in this rainforest, it actually rains a lot. Remember, if we remember yesterday, good morning, Alessandra and Christian. How are you? Remember, if we remember yesterday, um, it said, I think it said something like 33 uh, inches or centimeters, inches probably it'd have to be, of rain in the rainforest. Miss Mother doesn't remember. Can somebody help me? Maybe you can tell me. What do you think? All right, so moving on from the rainforest. So thank you, Diego, for your lovely information about the rainforest. And tomorrow, hopefully, maybe we'll get some more. Okay, good job. All right, now moving on from the rainforest, we are going to go to our calendar. All right, what do we got in our calendar today? Hmm, let me see, let me see. It is still March, one more day in the month of March, right? Yes. So what day is today? Today is March, Ms. Maggio lost her pointer, March 31st, March 31st, 2020, or you can say 2020, right? And so what day is today? So that's the date, but today is what day? Yesterday was Monday. So today is, hi, Brittany. So today is, you're right. Today is Tuesday. So yesterday was Monday. Today is Tuesday. And therefore, tomorrow is, very good. Tomorrow is Wednesday, right? Yesterday was Monday, today is Tuesday, tomorrow is Wednesday, okay? And tomorrow, Wednesday being tomorrow, tomorrow is going to be a new month, which is what month comes after March? I'm going to give you a hint. April! Very good. Tomorrow is Wednesday, and Wednesday, good job, Brittany, is going to be the very first day of April, April 1st. Okay? So, with that being said, we're still in March for today, though, right? Okay. So, we have our calendar, and our number for the day is... 31, you're right. So let's take a look at our number 31. And let's make some sentences with our number 31. What do you think? Some number sentences? All right, what number is in the ones place? Who remembers which, which one is the ones place? Very good. The one is in the ones place. Remember, this is the ones. And who can tell me what number is in the tens place then? You got it. The three is in the tens place. So we have the ones place and the tens place, right? In Spanish, we have unidades and we have docenas. So we have the ones and we have the tens, okay? Now, how many ones are there? One, one, one. And how many tens are there? Right, three, there are three tens. Okay, so who can give me a mathematical equation for the number 31? I'm gonna do what I did yesterday because if there's three tens, then I must be able to do 10 plus 10 plus 10, that was 30 yesterday, so 10 plus 10 plus 10, plus one equals 31. Yay, Miss Maggio. All right, what else do we have out there? Anybody else have a number sentence for me that they wanna share? You're absolutely right, good job, Brittany. 30 plus one. Equals 31. 
Good job. Anybody else have a number sentence out there that they want to share with us? Nope. How about 31 times 1? That one. Because remember, when you multiply, any number multiplied by 1 is that number, right? So if I have 31 times 1, it's 31. If I have 100 times 1, it's 100. If I have 50 times 1, it's 50. So we can do 31 times 1, and it is 31. Ooh. Now, um, Karen, our, friend, our teacher friend Karen from Canada is telling us to do it by fives. How many fives would I need? Let's count. How many fives do I need to get to 30? Let's count with me. Ready? Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And then I need to add, I'm going to put it over here, one, right? So if I have one, two, three, four, five, six fives plus one equals 31. Very good. Yes. All right. So we have five plus five plus five plus five plus five plus five plus, five plus one. Good job, Brittany. You have 28 plus three equals one, a 31. Good job, everybody, on our number 31 for today. Okay, who remembers about money? We were talking about money yesterday. And so let us, and coins, and remember different countries have different types of money and different types of coins, right? So we have um, pesos in the Dominican Republic where Miss Maggio is, remember? Miss Maggio is down here in the Dominican Republic. Yay. All right. So here in the Dominican Republic, we use the Dominican peso. Okay. So for example, where'd it go? I just had it. This is 100 pesos. Oh my goodness. You're probably thinking, wow, it's a lot of money. If you're thinking you're in dollars or like in Canada or in the United States, but 100 pesos here is about $2, okay? So, yep, that's Dominican money. But we're counting, we're going to be counting American money, all right? So let's go back to our coin song. Remember our coins, all right? And remember that in the United States, they have dollars and cents, and in Canada, also, they have dollars and cents, but different kind. Here they have pesos. Remember our friend Craig in Scotland, he has the pound in the pence, right? So there's lots of different kinds of, um, there's lots of different kinds of money all over the world. Yeah. In Japan, they call it the yen. In Russia, they call it the ruble. And um, so, yeah. Let us check out, and Europe calls it the Euro. So let's sing our song. You remember our song from yesterday? Because it's Miss Majo's favorite money song in the whole wide world. Who remembers? Who remembers the money song from yesterday? I don't know. Oh, here we go. I think um, Peter Pirate wants to share and sing this with us. What do you think? How much is a penny? How much is a nickel? How much is a dime? How much is a quarter? A penny is one, a nickel is five, a dime is ten, and a quarter is twenty-five. How much is a penny? How much is a nickel? How much is a dime? How much is a quarter? A penny is one, a nickel is five, a dime is ten, and a quarter is twenty-five. 
How much is a penny? A penny is one cent. Only one cent. A penny equals up to only one cent. How much is a nickel? How much is a nickel? Only five cents. Only five cents. How much is a penny? How much is a nickel? How much is a dime? How much is a quarter? A penny is one. A nickel is five. A dime is ten. And a quarter is twenty-five. How much is a penny? How much is a nickel? How much is a dime? How much is a quarter? A penny is one. A nickel is five. A dime is ten. And a quarter is twenty-five. How much is a dime? How much is a dime? A dime is ten cents. Only ten cents. Only ten cents. A dime equals up to only ten cents. Do you have that? How much is a quarter? How much is a quarter? Equals up to twenty-five cents. Twenty-five cents. A quarter cents. A quarter equals up to twenty-five cents. How much is a penny? How much is a nickel? How much is a dime? How much is a quarter? A penny is one. A nickel is five. A dime is ten. And a quarter is twenty-five. How much is a penny? How much is a nickel? How much is a dime? How much is a quarter? A penny is one. Are you guys singing? I hope so. If you have a penny, plus you have a nickel, put them all together and you have six cents. If you have a penny, plus you have a dime, put them all together when you have 11 cents. If you have a dime, plus you have a quarter, put them all together and you've got 35 cents. If you have a dime, plus you have a nickel, add them all together, you have 15 cents. How much is a penny? How much is a nickel? How much is a dime? How much is a quarter? A penny is one, a nickel is five, a dime is ten, and a quarter is twenty-five. How much is a penny? How much is a nickel? How much is a dime? How much is a quarter? A penny is one, a nickel is five, a dime is ten, and a quarter is twenty-five. Quarter, dime, nickel. Penny. Oh my goodness gracious. Is that not the best song in the world? Can you just not help yourself? Craig, our friend Craig in Scotland, loves that song. I do too. It's one of my favorites. And it's just so catchy that you can't help but not remember a penny, a nickel, a dime, and a quarter, right? Good stuff. All right. So with that being said, got to put you over there for a minute, Peter. Peter, Peter. Okay, so now that we have that, let's go and take a look at our counting coins. All right, so uh, if I can, aha, there it is. All right, oops, that's not gonna work, so don't worry, I have a backup plan. I always have a backup plan. So, if I can find my backup plan. All right, so Ms. Maja is just gonna do it right from here. Can you see all of these great, great coins? I can. All right, so let us remember that a penny is one. Can you see? I hope so. Okay. So we have a penny is one. A nickel, we have a cent. This is our cent sign, right? I don't know if you can see that at all. And then we have five cents. And then we have 10 cents. And then we have 25 cents. Okay? So if I have, and I'm gonna erase that. So if I have one quarter, one dime, one nickel and one penny, okay? If I have one quarter, one dime, one nickel, and one penny, how much money do I have? Anybody can tell me? I have one quarter, one penny, one nickel, and one dime. Well, it's kind of hard to add them across, so let's put them up and down, right? So I have a quarter is 25 cents, right? And a dime is 10 cents. 
and a nickel is five cents, and a penny is one cent, and I want to add them to see how much money I have, we have to do the right column first, right? What's five plus zero? Five plus zero is five, and then five plus five is 10, and 10 plus one is 11. So I put the, do I write 11 here? No, I don't write an 11 here. I take the one and I put it up here, right? Now we're gonna add again, ready? So I take my one plus two is three. Three plus one is four. So if I have one penny, one, nick, one dime, one nickel, and uh, one penny, one dime, one nickel, and one quarter, I have 41 cents. Hmm. Now you're wondering, what am I gonna buy with 41 cents, right? So let's take a look. What can we buy for 41 cents? First, it's not just gonna erase the screen. Let's see, what can we buy with 41 cents? And let's count money. Are you ready? Let's count money. How much money do you have for lunch today? I see a dollar bill as well as one quarter, three dimes, and two nickels. That should be enough to buy you something good to eat. This sandwich costs 100 cents. 100 cents? We only have 41 cents. Oh my gosh, I hope they have more for us. Let's see. 100 cents is equal to $1. One dollar. You can use your dollar bill to buy this PB&J. Sure looks good. Why don't you wash down your sandwich with a nice glass of milk? Oh, so we have, oh my milk goodness. Milk costs 40 cents. When you're counting Whoa, we can buy coins, some milk, right? We have 41 cents, on the huh? Coin with the highest value first. That makes it easier to figure the value. If you give me the quarter, a dime, and a nickel, the milk is all yours. 25 cents plus 10 cents plus 5 cents equals 40 cents. Very good. 40 Does that cents. give you enough left over to get a cookie too? Uh-oh. It uh -oh. looks like you'll have to pick something else no instead. Two cookies. cookies and a nickel only add up to 25 cents. And that's 25 cents less than the cost. All right. So we have 100 cents. And then we have some coins, right? So we said we have 100 cents, we have some coins. And so with 100 cents and some coins, okay, we have, he was able to buy a sandwich and he was able to buy milk because the sandwich was 100 cents, which is $1, okay? So in $1, there is 100 cents, okay? And then he was able to buy a milk which was 40 cents. Now he, after he used, bought the milk, he wanted to, to buy a cookie, but the cookie is 50 cents and he only has a, two dimes and a nickel. Two dimes is 10 cents plus 10 cents plus five cents. And therefore he only has 25 cents less left. So if he only has 25 cents left, can he buy a cookie? Nope, no cookie today for him. So let's see what he does buy. A cookie. That's okay. A banana costs less and is better for you. Oh, anyway. I so knew he's like going to get a banana. You can use math to count with money. Very you cool, let huh? Everyone know. All right. We love counting with money and math. Good. So there is our money lesson for today. And so if you want to know more about math, more about money, then you can go right ahead and practice, practice, practice. And um, so with that being said, let us go and take a look at some other uh, things that we can count with money. So Ms. Mangio is going to put, I'm going to make this really big, if I can, I don't know if I can. But, um, and so let's say 
we have, okay, let's say we have two quarters, one dime, two, two nickels, and three pennies, okay? It's a lot, is it a lot? Two quarters, so how much is a quarter? Who remembers how much is a quarter? Very good, it's 25 cents, right? So if I have two quarters, 25 cents plus 25 cents, right? Who knows what 25 cents plus 25 cents is? Very good. It's 50 cents, right? So we have 50 cents. Now, if I have 25 cents plus 25 cents, right? Um, now I have one dime, okay? I have one dime. How much is one dime? You're right, one dime is 10 cents. So let's add 10 cents to our 50 cents. And what's 50 cents plus 10 cents? Very good, it's 60 cents. Did everybody get that? All right, now, now I have two nickels. If I have two nickels, then I have five cents plus five cents. So what's five plus five? Who can tell me? What's five plus five? You're right, five plus five is 10. So I'm gonna add my two nickels together, which is 10 cents or five plus five, and I get 70 cents. Very good. And our last one, we have three pennies. Now remember, how much is a penny? A penny is one, right? So one, two, three. If I have three pennies, I need to add three cents. So I'm gonna put three cents over here. And how much do I have? 70 cents plus three cents? Very good is 73 cents. So I have 73 cents. With my 73 cents, remember a banana was, how much was the banana? The banana was 25 cents. The sandwich was 100 cents or a dollar. I don't have enough money for that. And, good job, Brittany, and uh, the cookie was 50 cents, right? And the milk, and the milk was uh, 40 cents. Okay, so the, um, the banana, I keep on losing my eraser. I think I'm losing my head, there it is. All right, so remember, the milk was, or the banana was 25 cents. Right? The banana was 25 cents. So let me put it here, a banana. And the sandwich was 100 cents, but I know I only have 73 cents, right? So I can't even get the sandwich. I can't even have a sandwich for lunch today. The cookie, mm, cookies, the cookie was 50 cents. And the milk was 40 cents, right? So, what can I have for lunch? I would really like a cookie. But if I get a cookie, I can't get anything else. Because if a cookie is 50 cents, if I want a cookie and a banana, 50 plus 25, zero and five is five. Five and two is seven, it's 75 cents. Do I have enough money? No. So I can't even get that, right? 
So no cookie and milk. So I can either only get a cookie or good job, Justin, Lucas, and Ava. What if I want to get a cookie or not a cookie? How about milk and a banana? Do I have enough money to at least get milk and a banana for lunch today? My mommy and daddy didn't give me enough, uh, very much money, so I can't have a cookie. So I know a cookie's not there. But can I have, what do you think? Do you think I can have a cookie and milk or a banana and milk? Let's add it up. Let's see what happens. If I add a 25 cents plus 40 cents. Am I going to have enough money to buy? I will have enough money to buy it. What do you think? Let's see. So I'm going to have 25 cents and 40 cents. So five plus zero is five. Two plus four is six. So I'll have. So if I want to buy a banana and milk, you're right, Brittany. Good job. I will have enough money to get the banana and the milk. It's 65 cents. Super. Now, if I buy the banana and the milk for 65 cents and I have 73 cents, how much money will I have left over? Hmm. How much money will I have left after I buy the milk and the banana? Anybody know? What do I have to do? Do I add? No, you're right. I need to subtract, right? So if I have, if I have 73 cents, right? And I'm going to buy the milk and the banana for 65 cents. Uh-oh. What do I do? Now remember, boys and girls, when we subtract, we start on the right. And then we go left. Okay. We start in the ones. Now three is smaller than five. What do I do? I need to do something that's called regroup, right? Okay. So in order to subtract the three from the five or the five from the three, I should say, sorry, I need to cross off the three and I need to make it I have to put a one in front of it. I make it a 13. But where'd that one come from? Good job, Brittany. You already did it before I finished. That one came from the tens. So I added 10 to the three. But in order to put 10 over to the three, I need to cross off the seven and I need to take one away from it, which is a six, right? So now let's try. What's 13 minus five? Good job, Brittany, 13 minus five is eight. And what's six minus six? Zero. So I will have eight cents left after I buy my milk and my banana. Can I buy anything else? No, I cannot. I do not have enough money. Tomorrow, I'm going to ask my mom and my daddy for more money so I can at least buy a sandwich for lunch. Maybe a cookie. <laughs> All right. Super job with your math, people. Super math skills. Super math skills. Don't we love math? We do. All right. Now, remember, if you're here with us today watching and you didn't put your name over here or you're not chatting, just let me know that you're here so that this way I can put your name in for participating with us. And remember, every Monday I pick a name from the people that watched or participated the week before. And you can be in the raffle for a uh, $10 Amazon gift card. Remember yesterday, the lucky winner was Camila. And Camila, last night, I sent her her uh, Amazon gift card. And so make sure you get, when you watch the show, 
During the show, you tell me, hi, Miss Maju, and you tell me who you are so I can write it, mark it down. And if you watch after, and if you're not here live, then in the comments after when you watch the TV show, you can um, put your name. I watched your show, Miss Maju. Okay. You also get one for watching and you also get an extra name in if you do our homework. Right. So today, Diego watched yesterday and he did his homework last night. So he has his name in twice for that Amazon gift card for next week. OK, so let us see some of the other homework that some people did last night from home. Now, yesterday was supposed to be um, for Salvador Dali. He is an artist. OK, but oops, sorry, sideways. He was our homework for yesterday, but that's OK, because sometimes if you're interested and you just forget, we love it when you still participate. So Valeria, OK, who is one of my first grade students here, did this beautiful drawing um, uh, recreation of Salvador, one of Salvador Dali's um, paintings, okay? And so let's see what she wrote. She wrote, Salvador Dali was a Spanish um, artist, symbolist artist. He was born in Figuer Figueras, Catalonia. I, it's a little bit blurry because I blew it up to draw it, to put it out or to print it out. Dali was a skilled uh, artist, craftsman, best known um, for the striking and bizarre images in his work. He was a little cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, but that's what makes his art very interesting. Um, Dali's artistic work included um, film, sculpture, and photography at times in collaboration with a range of artists in a variety of media. Dali was highly imaginative and also enjoyed an unusual behavior. The Persistence of Memory is his best known work and one of the most important paintings. Here she wrote, she did the painting that he did called Rosa Meditativa. So cool. Good morning, Yora and Lucas. Hi, boys. How are you? Um, so here you have it. Thank you for letting me know that you're here. Now, another one that we had, we said to do a, a um, an inventor, right? And I have an inventor one. And... Oh, wait, I have one more Salvador Dali that I just came out of the printer. Hold on, Miss Maju's going to go and get it really quick. Our friend Brittany did her biography on Salvador Dali, and she wrote Painting, Art, and Clocks Biography. Salvador Dali was born on May 11th, 1904 and died on January 26, 1989. He was born in Figueres, Catalonia, Spain. Salvador Dali was a Spanish painter who became famous for the unusual images uh, he used in his paintings. His most famous work was The Persistence of Memory in 1931, which is now in the MoMA, which is the Museum of Modern Art in New York City. And that one is really Ms. Majo's very favorite one of um, Salvador Dali. And there is no word as such as favoritist. But um, from Brittany, I love you, Miss Majo. Oh, how sweet is that? Good job, Brittany. And then yesterday I asked us because we were talking about inventors, right? And so I said, let's see if um, what we can do to see who invented something, right? So I have Macy sent us, and I showed you Alexander Graham Bell, a picture of him, right? I wonder if I still have him over here. We got, we have Alexander Graham Bell up here. 
and I have to erase my things. Oh my goodness. And so Alexander Graham Bell did for us. Let's find out what Macy found out. Oh, let me erase the wonderful markings that I made on here. Hi, Christian and Alessandra. I'm so happy you love the video. I love when you guys watch. This is Alexander Graham Bell. And she wrote, Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone. Bell was born in Edinburgh, Scotland. Oh, look, our friend Craig is from Scotland. In 1847 and died in Nova Scotia, Canada. <laughs> Hence, you Canadians out there, that's why the telephone company is called Bell. In 1922, he first became interested in the science of sound. Um, because both his mother and his wife were deaf. Um, deaf meaning they couldn't hear. Bell had many inventions, including the audiometer, which was a, a audiometer, sorry, the, a device used to detect hearing problems. He invented ways to teach deaf people how to talk. The metal detector, which is used to find, um, to try and find a bullet inside of President James Garfield. Very interesting. Ms. Maggio learned a very new thing today. I did not know that that's where the metal detector came from. Did you? Um, and also, he is one of those for that was Im very important in the initial um, uh, starting of the telephone. When Bell died, every phone in North America was silenced for a short period of time in his honor. Thank you, Macy. Macy Bautista Blunda. Thank you, Macy. Such a good job. Macy is one of our third grade students at my school. So, cool beans. And she wrote it in Spanish, which I will share in the Spanish class. With that being said, please remember to continue to watch us, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um, also now at the bottom, if you want to know anything about what we talk about here during class, you're welcome. I put my email there. You can send me um, an email and so glad so many people I'm going to have to take, I take attendance afterwards and I write down whoever visits and watches our class. So until tomorrow at 9 a.m., you all have, oh, you know what? I didn't give you guys a homework assignment, did I? Let's do something more about the rainforest. That will be our homework for tonight. So do a little something on research. If you're really little and you can't do that, then maybe you can do a drawing for Ms. Maggio. And if you're really big, um, then you can do something really cool about the Amazon, uh, the rainforest, a certain animal, a habitat. Let's see what you can do. So with that being said, everybody have a wonderful day. Stay happy, stay healthy, and I'll see you tomorrow morning again at Miss Maggio's morning meeting. Bye.